Hi everyone and welcome back to another lighting episode in my UE4 tutorials. In this episode we're going to be talking about light maps and uh, explaining what they are and how they work. So a light map it all comes down to baking. So if you haven't watched my other lighting videos, baking is whenever you place an object, a static object into your scene with a static light, um, you need to rebuild their lighting. Okay. So when you place this object here, you can see lighting needs to be rebuilt okay that's because the details of the lighting and scene have changed and we need to rebake them into the light maps now light maps are what stores that lighting data and that is then painted back on to the textures at runtime so what is a light map and how do they work well a light map is generated when you import an object by default anyway you can turn it off, but I always find you best to leave it on because Unreal 4 does actually quite a good job of generating these light maps. However, we will show you how to make your own. So a light map, if we go and click on this wall here, if you have a static mesh of your uh, object here, you can see the light map by going to the UV, click on here, and you'll see UV channel 0 and UV channel 1. By default, UV channel 1 is your light map. So click on that and you'll see your light map appear. Now, I don't like the light map that comes with this wall piece that comes with the starter content because they're quite close together. Now, the reason why that's an issue is because light maps are typically a lot lower resolution than the actual texture, because it's only storing light data. And you, for optimization sake, you wanna make it as small as possible. So if they're close together like this, you get what, what it can be called bleeding. So Basically, imagine like you've got a spray can and you're spraying all the light over this block because this bit is shaded in light. This bit is hidden in darkness, so it's not going to be lit. So I'm spraying, 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 but as you spray these edges here, it's going to basically fall over the line a little bit and it may bleed into this other shell here. And that's where you get bleeding effects coming from. So it's a good idea to space apart your uh, light maps. So I've got another example of a wall I remade. Uh, so if I open this one up and show you how I did light map for this one You can see the light map here is a lot more spaced out therefore I'm gonna get much uh, More accurate results when it comes to the light map So that is one way of fixing that issue if you do find yourself bleeding light Another way is to increase the resolution of your light maps. So that's not an issue as I said They're typically quite low resolution for example This wall here by default will come in as a resolution of four pixels. So it'd be really really crap okay so that's not really good so what we need to do is increase that that size there to improve our light map resolution and that may get rid of the bleed okay again you want to for optimization states keep it quite low okay so I would say maximum you want to go to is 512 like I wouldn't if you're going above that then you need to re just readjust your light map okay so how do we actually make a light map well in Maya so I've got Maya loaded up. All you do is make another UV map and just spread it out. Okay. So there's my UV map. I spread it out. And in, UV, in, in Maya, you can create a new UV set. And in Blender, you can do the same. You make another UV set and export that all out with the actual model. And when you import it in, so this is the one I imported in, you can change which UV map it uses. So UV0 is the one I made and UV1 is the one UE4 made. So there's their light map version. As you can see, quite compact, waste of space over here. May as well use it. So I want to use UV0 instead. So to change that, to use that one instead, we go to the details panel, scroll down until you find light map, and you'll see in the advanced section, which will probably be hidden by this little arrow here, click on that, and you can change the light map coordinate index. It by default will say one, you want to change that down to zero. Or whatever value you want to use. Okay, you can have as many as these you like. So and that's basically it. Okay, so that's that light map there. So what does this actually change inside the world? Okay, so here's our interior scene. Now, if you want to see just how the lighting looks, you can go over where it says lit and change it to lighting only. And you're going to see just the lighting data from the light maps. Now, you can see from my walls here, I've got a lot of dark bleeding into the actual uh, sort of uh, occluded edges here. Okay, so ambient occlusion, which would normally be here, is quite quite wide okay it's, it's darkened quite a lot okay and it gives a sort of dirty look okay not very nice so let's have a look if i increase the light map resolution what effect that has on the scene 
So I'm going to go into my static mesh, scroll down to light map resolution, and increase that to say 64 instead. Hit save, and then we have to rebuild the lighting. So build lighting only. And we should see a noticeable difference inside the light map resolution. Notice how it's a lot, lot smoother. And now our ambient occlusion inside these edges is a lot smoother, a lot more consistent, and overall a lot more pleasing to the eye. The ceiling isn't so much because we haven't changed that one. It's a different model. So let's change that one so you can see that working. So I'm going to go into the floor and go down to where it says light map resolution. So change that from four. Let's go up to really high and show you the difference if we make it a lot higher save and that's going to affect the floor as well because the floor is also that same uh, object i'm going to go into here build options build lighting only and let's see how that makes an impact on our scene so let's get into the corners here and see that effect take place okay so now you can see we've got a lot nicer sharper shadows inside these sort of crevices where the light is getting trapped in the ambient occlusion and likewise you're not going to get as much spillover on the interior anymore okay and that's basically it so if you do find yourself with bleeding lights increase the light map, light map resolution and also check that the shells aren't too close together if they are too close together then take it into a modeling program and create your own UV set based on what we know about light maps and then re-import it back in telling it to use that index instead. If you like this video and you would like to see more of what I do, you can find loads more videos over on patreon.com forward slash A donation of just $1 will get access to all those videos plus many more, access to Discord, as well as at higher tiers, project files and one-to-one -one support. If you like this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed already. And if you have any ideas for future content you want to see, leave a comment below. I'm always eager to listen and see what you guys want to uh, make. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everyone.